Hi, everyone. Uh, it's Thursday, April 4th. Uh, great to be with you today. Hope you had a great Wednesday yesterday. I hope you're having a great week as we're focusing on the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the dead. We do it as Christians every single day of our lives, especially on Sundays, the day he rose from the dead. But but this week especially as we just celebrated Easter. And I want to read uh, uh, the Easter account from John today, uh, emphasize a certain part of it. Uh, but we'll read the whole thing just to, to, to get, 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 get the picture, okay? So here it is. Um, Early on the first day of the week, uh, and, and by the way, this the chapter before, it ends with Jesus in the tomb. <laughs> because it was Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. So again, death, and now he's going to meet, meet life, as we talked about on Monday. But it goes on here. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed from the entrance. So the women went to the tomb. So, uh, so she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Uh, so Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. John got there first. Um, he bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Here's more evidence. The strips of linen, the way this is written, uh, it looked like a, a mummy with no, with no body inside. They weren't unfolded. They, they were just there. Huh? <laughs> um, then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself and separate from the linen. Uh, finally, the other disciple, who had re reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. And so he saw the, this evidence, the empty tomb, uh, the, the strips of linen, uh, the, the, the head covering folded and put aside, and, and he believed. Now notice here it says, they still did not understand the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. They still didn't understand the scriptures. They just saw the evidence. And, and I, I think that's really powerful stuff. God gives us this evidence. Now we're going to go on. I, I love this account on Easter morning. It's maybe my favorite one. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. And so Mary Magdalene is, is overwrought, right? is weeping. Uh, the, her world has caved in. Uh, this Jesus whom she loves so much is dead. The one she thought was the Messiah that, that would put everything right is dead. Um, her world has caved in and, and she's just weeping. They asked her, uh, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said. I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize it was Jesus. Her, her eyes were full of tears, right? Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. So Mary is so distraught. It's, can't, it's not even her mindset that there could be something greater than this darkness and this brokenness and this death. Um, it, it doesn't even enter her mind. Even when she comes to Jesus face to face, she doesn't recognize him. She thinks he's a garden because, you know, we do that. Our, our mindsets, when they're so negative, when, they're, when all they see is darkness, uh, when all they see is brokenness, um, when all they see is hopelessness, we, we get in this hole. Um, and, and, and that's where Mary was. Uh, so, uh, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. Yeah, he called her by name, Mary. Right? And he does for us. He says, I, in the Old Testament, I have called you by name, you are mine. He, and so through the darkness, he calls her name, Mary. And, and she recognizes her voice. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not returned to the Father. Go and said to my brothers and tell them I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. You know, why would Jesus say this? Because, you know, Mary, here he is. And so she grabs him and she doesn't want to let go. And he's saying, hey, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm going to be here. I, I'm not, I, I will ascend to my father, but today's not the day, <laughs> right? You can just, just relax. I'll, you'll, you'll see me again. Uh, you, you know, that's what she's, she just grabbed him. And he says, no, you can relax. Right? It, it doesn't depend on you having to grab me. I will be with you always. And I'll be with you where you can see me for, for quite a few days yet too. So, so that, that, that's what's going on here. And so she does what, what he asked. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. She told them they had seen these things to her. So I, I, I love this. You know, we, we, we started out uh, this, with, with this sermon. If not this, then what? Uh, the sermon of this last teacher. If not this, then, then what? 
And, and so here we see Mary, and she's in this place uh, of deep distress, tears, the darkness that has the brokenness has overcome her, uh, the the finalness of death in a sense. Uh, it happens to us too. It happens to us too, and we look all different kinds of places to to fix it, to get it filled up, to get victory over that. And and Jesus says, "I am the way and the truth and the life." Uh, this is. This is what I bring you in, my, in the cross and in the resurrection. That, that's what the creed said, right? I've, I've, these, these are the first things. He died for our sins and he rose again, <laughs> right? Um, and, 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 and I love then this reality that he comes to Mary uh, in her tears uh, and he, he comes as the one who rescues her, the only one who can and who gives her life in him. And that's what he does for you and me. Uh, and, and, and I, and I love, that's why we had the theme this last Easter, this last Sunday, if, if not this, then what? There, there is no other thing. See, uh, this is the one, one who loves us so much that he would lay down his life for us on the cross. The love who by, uh, that, that causes him to touch our hearts by his spirit whispers to us that, that all this is true and it's true for you and to, and, 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 and to empower us to receive him and to live in him every day. And, and even stretching beyond death into eternity. Um, today, um, let him meet you in those tears and, and, and hear him as he calls you by name, Mary. <laughs> I have called you by name, you are mine. Trust in him, rest in him, and, and, and then share him with those around you. But would you pray with me? Dearest Jesus, we, we thank you uh, for this day, for, for this for these words that, that you show us what Easter is all about, you come to us in our tears and brokenness and hopelessness, and you give us yourself. You call us by name. You give us life the way it was meant to be, life lived in you. Lord, help us to receive this with joy and to share it. Pray in your name. Amen. All right, we'll see you Sunday, hopefully, and then next week, may God be with you. We start our new series. It's called Joy. Looking forward to it. That's uh, this coming Sunday. Bye-bye.